You can't go wrong with Bolero. That goes for the song, great soundtrack material. And the company, Kramer Fave Bolero, is one of the rare SPAC plays that I've been willing to endorse because it's an old-fashioned SPAC. They raise a pile of money, and they're using that money to gradually consolidate the very fragmented bowling industry. I mean, come on. Turns out bowling's a real good business. Bolero reported its most recent quarter a couple weeks ago. It was across the board beat. The stock jumped in response to the point where it's now up more than 14% for the year, and it deserves to be. So can Bolero keep rolling? Let's take a closer look with Thomas Shannon. He's the founder, chairman, and CEO for more. Mr. Shannon, welcome back to Leo. Mr. Shannon, welcome back to me. But he had to do that. I remember, well, that's because he knows that I always make up a name when I bowl. You never use your real name because you got to put your funny name up. I'm what? Beethoven. Beethoven. I'm Beethoven. Yes. Always. And Beethoven, I'm... as I was told when I was one of your lanes last time. Mm -hmm. Let's go right to it. Okay. You are a SPAC that worked. Well, I think we're the number one D SPAC of 2021. Um, we're a real company, Jim. I mean, we broke through a billion dollars in revenue in December. That felt really good. We started with a million dollars a year in revenue when I bought uh, the original Wayne's, and, and now we're a billion. Uh, 353 million of TTM EBITDA. Right. We're firing at all cylinders. Okay, you, most people are excited about two to three to four percent comparable store sales. What are yours? Uh, 30. <laughs> no, okay. So people say that's preposterous. But when you buy the link, a link, and let's just say it's okay, because a lot of them don't look that good, what do you do? Well, we do a full cosmetic refresh. We fix all of the structural deficiencies in the building, air conditioning, lighting, uh, uh, parking lots. We make it so that it's a, a first-class experience from an infrastructural standpoint, and then really just a wonderful aesthetic overlay and a service proposition that you wouldn't expect. Yeah, I mean, it is just a very inexpensive giant birthday party when we throw them and we go to Bolero. Mm -hmm. uh, you added something I've not seen yet, Moneyball. Moneyball, right. So it's a skill-based app where you can come in and we give you challenges. So the first thing we do is we'll give you $5 to see if you can bowl 100 or more. And then if you do, you get to pick from a series of three challenges. And our algorithm knows how well you've bowled, right? It's proprietary algorithm and it will give you challenges based on how well we think you do. So maybe uh, bowl three strikes in a game or break 120, whatever it is. The whole point of all of this is to get you to bowl the third game. Our average bowler bowls 2.2 games right. I know. per I know. visit. They always want to leave, These or they're too drunk. I mean, yeah, my friends. Well, I always say you got to bowl three because the first one's a warm-up. That's right. So if we get you to go from two to three, probably we can get a 25% increase in revenue, which would be about a 50% increase in EBITDA. It's a huge incentive for us to get you to stay, and we're going to pay you to do it. All right, now, you also own the Professional Bowling <laughs> Association. For those of us who watch it on TV, you can see that they have, like, not unlike when you go to Formula One. I mean, everyone's wearing stuff that they're making money. Do you share that with the, uh, with the actual bowlers? We do, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of enthusiasm. So we do $100 million a year in league business. We're big proponents of sport bowling. Right. Um, and we've really tried to reinvigorate that aspect of the business. Now, one I know, that actually my whole team knows, the big event in Cherry Hill. That's yes. a huge, huge uh, group of lanes. What will happen when you get in there? What's the first thing you do? Well, I mean, uh, it's a great center. Uh, really excited that we just closed on that. It needs a cosmetic refresh. It's yeah. pretty boring. You know, right. so we're just going to revamp it and make the lights, it. The lights make it exciting? Lights, well, the lights, the, the, whole, the whole aesthetic, really, audio, right. visual, everything, right. yeah. yeah. And that's just the playbook. Now, the playbooks could be extended to new ones? New ones, sure. So we have six leases signed. We're actually under construction. We'll have probably a handful open this year. By the way, we acquired eight bowling centers in the last quarter, right. and then big event already this quarter. So between buying and building, I'm shooting for 20 to 30 new centers this year. Is the country under bold? Well, it is, yeah. So back in the peak in the 70s, there were 12,000 bowling centers. Wow. Right, and the population was half what it is now. So now there are 4,000 bowling centers and double the population. So there's one-sixth as many bowling alleys per person as there were in the 70s. Now, when I tried to buy a bowling alley, I saw that there was tremendous money to be made in a revamp. Now, I, and I also realized that if you could have, say, waitresses, if you could have a, a center console of drinking, you could crush it. 
you do all these things, and it is crushing, right? <laughs> We, we do it all, yeah. I mean, it, it's really a very high-end experience, believe it or not. And I think what people don't understand is our average customer is probably going to Vail uh, in the winters, Absolutely. right? It's not what you would think. It's a six-figure household income all day long. And we have bowling centers that we built in the suburbs doing $10 million. That's unheard of in the bowling business. Okay, so I, the stock is up. And it's at its high. Um, I saw you sold a lot of stock. Are you dead other stock? Me personally, yeah. I sold about uh, less than 3% of my okay, holdings. Good. That's all it is. Good, because yeah. I'm telling people that this thing can go much higher. And you know I don't have any conviction about any other SPAC. And it's not just you have an amazing board, but it also happens to be a sport I love. Well, you were right from the start, and we appreciate well, that. Well, I mean, you know, look, those of us who tried to be in this business know this is a fabulous business, and you have really figured out how to do it. I want to thank Tom Shannon, Valero founder and CEO. He only sold 3% of his holdings. He's still got plenty behind that, of which I hope he doesn't sell, because I think the stock goes to much, much higher. B-O-W-L. Mad Money's back in the break.